Before we even moved into this house in May, I promised the girls I would build them an awesome bunk bed setup. I think it's about time I deliver on that promise. I'm doing something a little bit different with this build, and this is part one of a two-part video series building these bunk beds. In this episode, we're going to build the basic structure. If you're new to my channel and you want to catch the second episode of the series, consider subscribing or at least ask your virtual assistant to set a reminder next Wednesday, because that's when the next video is going to be released. I started the build by cutting four 2x4s the entire width of the bunk beds. I also cut eight 2x4s the width of the mattresses. These 2x4s will make up the structural frame of the beds. I also cut two 2x4s to the height of my ceiling. These are going to function as posts in the middle of the bed. 13 foot 2x4s just are going to be a little bit too springy without that center support. I marked the studs on the wall ahead of time to speed up installation and got to assembly. Each horizontal frame piece is attached with three three and a quarter inch screws before mounting it to the wall. You could replace these screws with joist hangers to add strength and simplify the build, but I prefer this cleaner look. The 2x4 plate is then installed into the studs using 3 inch lag bolts. These sub assemblies are large and unwieldy, so do what you can to assemble them in place if possible. Once I mounted the top bunk to the wall, it made a decent impromptu workbench for assembling the bottom bunk. Plus, I could use the top bunk as a giant story stick to reference where to position the other stretchers on. Once again, the bottom bunk was installed into the studs using 3-inch lag bolts. Now it's time to install those 2x4s that were cut to the height of the ceiling. These fit into the little channel I left between what would become the headboards of the two beds. The total width of these beds is 13 foot 3 inches in my case. If you have a little more space, it would be better to install these parallel to the bed rails for added strength. But either way, this thing is like the rock of Gibraltar. After installing the post with screws, the sandwich can now be completed with the outer bed rail. Again, I attach this with three and a quarter inch screws, quadruple checking that everything is still level. This is the backbone of the beds, so if you screw anything up here with the framing, you're just making headaches for yourself later in the build. For the inner bed rails, I ripped down a few 2x4s and screwed them into the structural rails. This is a critical failure point for the bed, so you may want to add glue to these joints. For the bases on my beds, I chose to use half inch plywood, which is a little bit springy, but more than strong enough for this application. If you wanted something stiffer, you could use three quarter inch plywood. And if your kids are hot sleepers, you might consider slats to allow air to circulate under the mattress. I cut my plywood to size and dropped it in. And at this point, I also added a two by four furring piece to the front faces of each of the posts that I'm gonna nail my trim boards into. It's of course at this point that it was time for a strength test. Honestly, add some simple rails and ladders at this point and your kids are gonna be happy. The novelty of sleeping up high will outweigh any fancy touches you could ever come up with. But that doesn't mean we're not gonna try, which is why the next step is gonna be covering up all that two by four framing with some clean, smooth three quarter inch MDF. I used a track saw to rip this into eight inch strips and measured and cut them all to length. It's important to measure the actual dimensions in the room before cutting because walls in a house are rarely square and even if they are, they may be slightly bowed from installation. I started from the center and worked my way out installing the trim boards. I used a cut off piece of MDF to give myself a proper spacing for the rail fascia so I can come back and add the top piece without any fuss. Each piece of MDF was attached with several inch and three quarter brads with no glue. If you wanted it to be stronger, you could add construction adhesive behind the MDF, but honestly, that just sounds like more work when the girls grow out of this thing in five to eight years. With the fascia now installed, I went back to the shop to assemble the boxes that would cover the posts. It's very important when working with MDF to pre-drill and countersink all of your holes before assembling with screws. MDF is just gonna mushroom on you if you try to drive in even the best self-tapping screws, and that's no bueno. If you measured and assembled everything carefully, you'll end up with a pretty snug fit. I then installed the front boxes with countersunk screws through the fascia. The other side of the box and the headboard are going to be a little more complicated, so let's measure carefully for these and go back to the shop so I can walk you through it. I started by building the headboard that was just the right width to fit between the two boxes and whatever height you want. I positioned the headboard on top of the box and pre-drilled a few holes through the inside of the box using a collet extension on my drill. Then I removed the headboard and completed pre-drilling the holes to avoid the aforementioned mushrooming. I then repositioned the headboard onto the box and gave the box a little bit of counterweight so that I could hang the headboard over the edge of my workbench, which in this case was my table saw. Don't judge. And this is where the unexpected hero of this bunk bed build came into place. 
Rapid Setting CA Glue. I used a couple different kinds throughout the build, but I did drop an affiliate link in the description for my favorite CA glue right now, Starbond Thick and the Rapid Cure Aerosol. It's got just the right consistency for these fiddly kludges that always seem to pop up in woodworking. To be clear, the CA glue clamped the pieces in place so I could then follow up with screws into the pre-drilled holes for a stronger connection. I then screwed the box and headboard into the post and toe-nailed it into the other side. Hey baby, can you hand me that box of screws right there? I'm sure. Thank you. What box? See that box right there of big screws? Yeah. Can you hand me that? Yeah. But you're too high. I'll reach down for you. Okay, after I close it. Yeah, close it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you're so strong. Thank you. You're very helpful, thank you. With all the trim boards, fascia, or whatever we were calling them, it was time to get the whole thing cleaned up and ready for paint. I set all the brad nails that weren't sunk beneath the surface of the MDF with a set, then filled all these holes and all the countersinks for the screws with a two-part Bondo wood filler. This two-part Bondo wood filler sets up really fast and is a little tough to work with, but it's really the best fill for MDF or plywood when prepping for paint. After bonding my little heart out, I sanded everything flush to around 80 grit with sandpaper, and it was time for some roundovers just to make sure the kids wouldn't bump their heads on those sharp corners. Go with a quarter inch roundover so my lines stayed pretty clean, but you could go with a wider roundover if you wanted smoother transitions, or even a chamfer if you wanted sort of a harder edge. MDF does need some sort of edge treatment before painting though, or it's going to get all messed up over time. For a finish, I went with Kills water-based primer. Uh, took two coats to get a nice smooth surface. This is really important for filling in all those little voids and texture in the plywood. Then I brushed on two coats of some good durable white paint that would hopefully stand up a little better to the kids' punishment that they're inevitably gonna inflict on this bed. This was as far as I was able to get before allowing the kids to go ahead and move in. So I put all the mattresses in and started putting in all the sheets. Everything else was going to be assembled in my shop. From here, it was time to add the rails and the ladders and all the fancy finishes that were really going to make this thing pop. Whoa, indeed. And the next video, I'm gonna be finishing up the rails and ladder and really sexing this thing up. You won't wanna miss that. So if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more of this build, be sure you get subscribed and hit that bell icon so YouTube knows to notify you whenever I release a video. It's going to be coming out next Wednesday, so you can set your reminder if you're not into subscribing and whatever, and I totally get that, but whatever floats your boat. In other channel news, I do have the Woodwork Life logo tee back in stock on the store at my website, woodworklife.com, as well as the Keep It Sharp shirt. So if you wanna pick up one of those and help support the channel, I would really appreciate that, but get them while you can. That being said, remember to keep your tools sharp and keep your mind sharper.